Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new here, I briefly tell you my name is Mel. I'm an Uruguayan neuroscientist and on the side of my PhD, I have this channel where I interview people from all over the world that are doing cool science from different topics. And today's guest is from London, UK. Her name is Ava Mason and she's a PhD student and we are going to talk about mental health, mental disorders, research, clinical aspects, also her story, like what did she study and how did she discover the passion for uh, this kind of topics and also she will give some nice tips for students that maybe they also want to choose a career path uh, on these topics and they don't know exactly how to do it. Also Ava has a YouTube channel about all things mental health and student life and tips so I also invite you to check out that. Hi Ava, welcome and it's very nice to have you here. Thank you so much for giving time for this. Uh, thanks for having me, I'm really happy to be here. So to start, why don't you tell us a bit about your story? Um, firstly, I did an undergraduate degree at the University of Nottingham in psychology and then I was considering doing a clinical doctorate so I tried to give uh, to gain kind of as much clinical experiences as I could because um, it's quite competitive to try for that doctorate role um, so you need quite a lot of clinical experience in different mental health settings so I did quite a lot of volunteering during my undergraduate degree and also during my masters so I thought that I would do a masters after that to try and uh, help me against the competition but I ended up doing a master's in psychiatric research not clinical psychology and I think that was because I was quite interested in understanding how medication played a role in psychological therapies um, yes yeah, so I did a master's at King's College London in Denmark Hill campus and I really enjoyed it and I think um, when I did the psychiatric research masters I really understood a lot more about the research and academic career path and that's what kind of got me interested more in a research career. So then after this, I did some more clinical experience roles, uh, working as like a rehabilitation assistant, healthcare assistant, and a behavior support therapist before getting a research assistant role. And I got this within King's College London in the same campus that I had done my master's in. And then I kind of applied for different PhD programs and decided that I wanted to pursue more of a self-funded PhD program so I could propose my own project and I ended up being successfully admitted to um, University College London and I'm going to be starting there in a few days. Sounds great, congrats! Also, I would just like to add that I have lived in London all my life. Um, I thought that it was really interesting as a University of Nottingham student to kind of live independently during the three years of my undergraduate degree where I was living in Nottingham. Um, it was such a great place to live, um, especially as a student because of the student life there and the social aspects. And um, I would probably consider moving out for a bit of time in the future, but for now, and I'm definitely going to stay here for the time being. Yes, I can imagine London has everything, basically a lot of opportunities, so it's always a fantastic choice. And within this field, then, what are your interests or which topics are your favourite? I'm just interested generally in schizophrenia as a disorder. I'm quite interested in the neuroscience aspect and the psychological impact of it on individuals as well as how uh, different biological and psychological factors can play a part in developing the disorder. Um, I've also been interested in PTSD for quite a while and trying to understand how flashbacks and kind of the positive symptoms of PTSD are related to the kind of delusions and hallucinations that you can have with schizophrenia. Um, they're quite similar symptoms and I think I've always wanted to understand how they might differentiate or how they are quite similar to each other. So I think that's the reason why I decided to pursue a PhD looking at the effects of trauma on schizophrenia to see um, why individuals might develop PTSD or schizophrenia after having a traumatic experience. There's so many complex parts to that because obviously trauma can be experienced at different parts of your life. Could be at childhood which could affect more your brain development or maybe at adulthood which could change your perception of how you see things in general. And also just the trauma of having a symptom of having a kind of disorder like schizophrenia and how having traumatic experiences from your symptoms might actually increase the severity of the disorder. So I would say I'm really interested in the aspect of trauma related to schizophrenia and PTSD and kind of how they all relate together. 
I think from a personal perspective, why I've always been interested in schizophrenia specifically is because I had a relative who had it. And from a young age, I never really understood the disorder. And it was one of those disorders which has a very stigmatized view upon, and it's not as relatable as say, maybe other disorders like depression and anxiety. Um, I think having hallucinations and delusions can be quite an unusual symptom to have. And I've always wanted to understand this disorder from a young age. So I think that kind of need to understand the disorder and then the need to just understand which is what quite a lot of research is about may be interested in pursuing that as a PhD. Wow, that's fascinating and such an important topic, right? Because for a long time, mental disorders were such a taboo and we do need a lot of research on this. And within that, is there an aspect that you prefer um, like dedicating to the clinics or like doing research or a bit of both or maybe you didn't figure it out yet? Well, I'm not really sure if I want to go more into the academic career or more into a clinical career after a PhD. So that would require doing a clinical doctorate afterwards and then maybe combining my understanding that I gained from my PhD during my clinical role. And then I could perhaps work as a clinical psychologist part time and also work within an institute or university. Um, I'm not really sure. I think that this is something that will come in time from my PhD, seeing where my strengths are, whether that's communicating with individuals, whether that's during the recruitment of participants and being able to talk to participants more, seeing whether that kind of clinical experience is one of my strong points, or if it's just the research side of writing a thesis and whether I'd more like to go into a research career afterwards. But I think from my point of view, being able to get a greater understanding into schizophrenia as a disorder Seeing how trauma plays a role in that could really help um, increase and tailor interventions to make them more successful in this participant group. And I think that there are many ways that that can be done, that could be done through the primary stages of doing more research into schizophrenia and how trauma plays a role in that. And then maybe tailoring this to uh, improve interventions that are currently in place and seeing how they are effective in these individuals who might not be compliant to treatments occurring right now. So I'm not really sure in the future whether I'd be more interested in doing more and more research to understand this mechanism or whether I'd be interested in um, implementing that through the treatment outcome. But I know for sure that I'm really interested in individuals with trauma and schizophrenia and I want to work with in these individuals in some way, whether that's through research or clinical career. But we'll see how time goes. Yes, yes, there's still time to figure that out. And could you tell us some interesting research result or something in this field that maybe you have read about or you would like to share with us? So I think as part of a research career, it's really good to have different interests so that you can also collaborate um, with different manuscripts and different research teams. So during my uh, master's, I was doing a literature review looking at inflammation and depression, and I found that to be really interesting. But I think what I found to be super interesting that is definitely a hot topic at the moment is the use of recreational drugs as a treatment option and trying to repurpose drugs that have already been made and developed. So for example, ketamine with depression, I just find it really interesting the idea that we would use ketamine as a treatment. At the moment, we're doing some short-term tests and there have been some really good results for that. But obviously the long-term use would have to be understood because of the side effects that come with ketamine. I think um, just the biology behind that, a lot of individuals who are non-compliant to antidepressants, so they're known as being treatment resistant depressants, it are usually due to um, the kind of drugs not targeting the right mechanism within them. So a lot of antidepressants at the moment are looking at serotonin and reduced serotonin that occurs in people with depression. But there aren't that many treatments into glutamate and the role that glutamate has as a neurotransmitter within depression. And that's something that ketamine targets. So that's the reason behind looking at the recreational drug of ketamine for depression. Um, I think also trying to understand how we would reduce the stigma of using recreational drug for a treatment for depression is something that would need to be considered if the effectiveness was good enough to perhaps use. But I think it would always be seen as a last resort, um, something that would only be considered if someone was completely resistant to all different types of depression treatment. But there are also so many other kinds of recreational drugs that are being repurposed to see if they can be effective for other disorders. And I've always been interested in that concept. Yes, this area has a lot of potential. And can I ask you to give us some words on your opinion about what's the value and importance that these areas are being developed? 
research is the key way we can tailor and increase and improve interventions that are currently in place for people with mental disorders. So this could be preventative measures to reduce the, trans the, the chances of an individual at high risk of developing a disorder actually developing it, which is definitely the kind of thing that we're trying to do for people who are ultra high risk of psychosis, for instance. Um, research can also tailor interventions and try and understand why people might be resistant to one type of intervention and not another, whether that's a psychological therapy type or whether that's a medication. It can also help improve medications out there and improve therapies. Not only is it to increase the effectiveness of the treatments, but it's also to better understand the individuals who may have the disorder and understand how complex the disorder really is. There are so many different factors, whether that's environmental, biological, psychological, that can cause an individual to elicit symptoms of a disorder. And it's really important to understand that each individual is an individual who has gone through completely different kind of biological experiences and environmental differences. And our understanding of the disorder is really what will generate how we look at a person and how we can tailor their intervention specifically and also to reduce the stigma of a disorder in itself. So being able to understand a disorder as a research community means that we can then convey that knowledge to the general public and reducing stigma for an individual means that they may also have a better quality of life because of the way they're treated by others, not just about the treatment they receive. Yes, definitely, I agree. I also want this opportunity to ask you if you have any tips for students that maybe they are watching this video and they want to pursue a path similar like yours, do you have any advice that you would like to share? I think the biggest tip that I would give as someone who has constantly faced rejections throughout my whole academic career until now, and I'm sure I will do in the future, um, is to just not give up. Um, only you know your potential and only you know what you are capable of and there will always be someone um, who thinks that you might not be good enough or who rejects you from a certain application but you really need to be able to trust yourself and always try and stay as motivated as possible and not let other people stop you from pursuing opportunities because the one thing you'll regret when you look back at that time is the fact that you didn't pursue an opportunity or you didn't try as hard as you could even if you do end up getting rejected. I think for me one of the things that I've always looked back on is thinking, should I, could I have done more? And if the answer is yes, then really um, that's all you can do. I know for sure that there have some been academic staff in my life who have told me not to pursue uh, applying for King's College London or even University College London and I think if I'd listened to them I never would have tried to pursue those opportunities, wouldn't have been able to get a research assistant job, wouldn't have been able to get on the masters or even the PhD, which is something that I was able to try and fund myself and also just apply um, to as many different opportunities and communicate and try and email as many supervisors as I could in order to get that chance for myself. So I really did have to rely on myself and a research career really does rely on your resilience. So I think it's important to give yourself credit knowing that you try the best you can. Some things are always going to be out of your control but if you do the best that you can and you give yourself all the opportunities that you can you really can't um, hate yourself for not doing enough. Um, yeah, so I would just say stay motivated and try and make sure that you make your own opportunities and pursue the ones that are out there as much as possible. I think also it's important to know that there is no rush. There is no one saying that by a certain age you have to have achieved a certain goal, especially in research. There is no time when you should be on a PhD. I think it's important not to rush things and make sure that you uh, know that this is the best thing for you because there's nothing worse than going on a PhD program for instance that you're not interested in and being stuck doing something for at least three years uh, which you realize that you're not actually passionate about and the same thing with job applications make sure that you apply for jobs that you're interested in and you don't rush into doing certain things there is always a step beforehand that you can take in order to develop yourself and develop your understanding and knowledge of a certain thing so that you know that the next step you're doing is right so for me I did apply for PhD applications beforehand um, and I didn't get them but I know that if I had it would have been too early and I did a lot of maturity and I learned a lot more about different academic skills during that time through uh, research assistant roles and honorary research assistant roles and now that I'm in a good place where I've developed research skills I'm going to need for that PhD without having jumping head first into it earlier on 
and not feeling like I was mature enough or academically knowledgeable enough to do so. So I would say don't rush as well and make sure you take your time at each step. Yes, this is very important. Take your time to decide exactly what you want to do with your life. Uh, stay motivated and once you decide, go for it. And yeah, those were all the questions I had for today. So thank you very much, Ava, for giving your time for this. It was a pleasure to have you here. I will leave the, uh, your YouTube channel in the description so people can visit. And thank you for your attention. If you like the video, I invite you to give thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. It really helps the channel to grow and uh, also to write comments suggesting topics that you would like me to bring to the channel. I also have a Patreon account that you could do a monthly donation if you want to, to help the channel grow. With this, obviously, I will have more power to make more videos, more content, fast, uh, of more topics. And um, yeah, that was it. And if you enjoy this, I invite you to go to the channel to check out other videos. Maybe there's something that you like and then see you next time. Bye bye.